What's going on everybody? Happy Friday. It looks like we're ending the week pretty strong. And in this video, I'm going to talk about spot Bitcoin ETF inflows, what we've been seeing there lately. I'm going to mention Riot. I haven't looked at it on the chart. I'm going to show you guys what I see there. And what else? And we're also going to talk about an indicator that could bring us to 190k. Now, if you guys get something useful out of this, you know what to do. And let's get started and look at Bitcoin. It is a really good day today. Miners are doing pretty dang good. Green across the board in general. Bitcoin's up about 3.5% right now as of this upload. And one thing that I've been showing you guys is this ascending channel. I think we are going to continue to follow it unless we break out. We might have a good move to the upside. Otherwise, we will in general move to the upside. But if we can break this resistance level, that would be fantastic. We are right at it. I personally expect we're going to find resistance on it and kind of follow this chop, which is okay. One thing to watch out for is on the 4 hour, well it depends on where this these next candles close. If we just rip out of nowhere, this will invalidate it, but it does look like we're seeing a bearish divergence. We're seeing the chart posting, trying to post higher highs, and we're seeing the chart posting lower highs. But like I said, if Bitcoin keeps moving, this will invalidate the bearish divergence. Like I've said before a few times now, if Bitcoin comes all the way down to 60k, it won't invalidate this pattern. Even if we drop to 60k, we can still continue this uptrend, this general ascending channel. Keep an eye on these divergences. We have been getting them left and right. Um, on our last run up towards this resistance, we were looking at a divergence here. You're seeing lower highs on the RSI. You're seeing higher highs on the chart. So keep an eye on the bearish and bullish divergences. The market has been pumping them out a lot lately. And I showed you guys this the other day, but look at this huge bullish divergence, uh, basically where we bottomed out. We saw the RSI creating higher lows. The chart was creating lower lows at the time. And we did, sure enough, bottom out here at like 54K on this bullish divergence. And so you guys really see what I'm talking about. There's that lower lows and higher lows. So I do think Bitcoin is going to continue to react to these divergences they're popping up left and right i do think other traders are watching them and trading them and it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy for now at least plus divergences are usually already a good indicator anyways now spot bitcoin etfs we've been seeing nothing but inflows lately we reached our 10th consecutive day 84 million dollars in inflows yesterday now that is a decrease of what we've been seeing lately in the last 10 days we have seen over $2 billion of inflows. Recently, inflows have been cooling off, but we still have been seeing net inflows. Maybe next week we see an outflow day, a little bit of fear. But seeing 10 consecutive inflow days in a row, guys, I mean, this is what we're going to see in general. We are, in general, going to see inflows more than outflows. Bitcoin is going to appreciate in price because of it, along with many other factors. Before we know it, though, the Mt. Gox fear and sell pressure involved in it will be ancient history. It'll be a non-issue. But what do we continue seeing? We'll continue seeing spot Bitcoin ETF inflows. We also have Bitcoin hash rate drawdown hitting a bear market level, but miners aren't selling. Because we just got out of the halving only a few months ago, this is the first quarter that's going to reflect it, by the way. Because of this, you know, some miners are struggling. Despite all this, we have one company that didn't sell any Bitcoin, Marathon. And there's other Bitcoin miners that are focusing on hodling as well. The fact that there's all these words of capitulation and miners just struggling... I'm not buying it. And as mentioned, Bitcoin's hash rate drawdown has dropped to levels that haven't been seen since December 2022. But look at this, very interesting. Speaking to Cointelegraph, a spokesperson for Bitcoin mining pool operator via BTC, said that while hash rate dropped, its decline wasn't as substantial as the one seen during the bear market, and its impact on the network and miners is relatively minor. And since the halving in April, the network's hash rate has consistently remained around 600 EH per second, exahash per second, far above the 250 exahash per second seen in December 2022 and highlighting a notable improvement in hash rate over time. It's not surprising that some public miners have continued to hodl, as public miners generally have a lower all-in cost per coin than the network as a whole. Remember, there are publicly traded Bitcoin miners that are also little companies that aren't publicly traded there's also people that are just mining bitcoin in their basement or something and like i've said to you guys you know financially wise balance sheet wise they're in much better positions than they were during the bear market they shored up their balance sheets via debt repayment and atms dilution it is a necessary evil for companies that are unprofitable welcome to small caps here's some words on a bitcoin miner death spiral a death spiral as lushkovich put it i butchered that i'm sure is a theoretical concept where the inverse relationship between minor rewards and energy requirements causes a network to collapse when incentives uh, no longer cover the costs. And basically the theory is that when these miners start capitulating after a significant price drop, 
or rise in hash rate, the network could crumble. However, in such a scenario, network fees could spike while throughput ground to a halt, resulting in frustration and inconvenience for transacting participants. However, it's important to note that such an event is yet to occur in a practical sense. And this death spiral is unlikely to occur because the Bitcoin network has built-in mining difficulty adjustment mechanisms that accommodates the network's capacity. When the hash rate drops, the difficulty level drops along with it, guys. When the hash rate rises, the difficulty rises. So when you see Bitcoin miners going offline, it helps the ones that are currently online. This is why Bitcoin mining kind of remains a certain balance. And it's like there's a whole piece of the pie, right? Each miner gets a chunk of that pie. The pie doesn't necessarily get bigger or smaller. If more miners mine Bitcoin, you get a smaller chunk of the pie. If less miners mine Bitcoin, you get a bigger chunk of the pie. And obviously that's the very most simplest explanation and that has little to do with actual Bitcoin's price fluctuations, how tasty the pie is, how profitable the pie is. It's just your chunk of pie, for lack of a better example. Here's something additionally, if miners did start capitulating, the difficulty adjustment would require mining difficulty to ease competition, increasing the rewards for those that kept on mining, kind of like I just told you guys. And in essence, mining is a long-term investment endeavor. When miners start, they commit substantial time, capital, and resources. Their strategies typically span extended periods rather than short-term durations. Now there are fears that a falling hash rate means a falling Bitcoin, and Max Kaiser's famously said that price follows hash rate. To back his bullish predictions, does it work the other way around? Well, does Bitcoin price actually follow hash rate? There's a slight lag between Bitcoin's price and hash rate. And Bitcoin's price doesn't necessarily follow the hash rate, more that it leads it. Now I'll leave it down below for you guys, but I'll end it here. While the hash rate may be dropping over a plethora of factors, the network security remains assured, pointing to the recent decline as a potential bottom signal. The signal is supported by other metrics, including Bitcoin exchange reserves and miner reserves, all of which suggest low selling pressure. And we've got another article a little bit more positive this time around. Kind of exciting to think about. Bitcoin's crazy tight Bollinger Bands point to a 190k Bitcoin price target. And Bitcoin volatility cues like this have only been so skewed in bull's favor twice in its history. Compressed Bollinger Bands ignite a talk of a six-figure Bitcoin price. Bitcoin has the fuel to reach six-figure all-time highs if volatility signals play out like in the past. Bollinger Bands are crazy tight by historical standards. Only two other months in history have we seen the Bollinger Bands so compressed. April 2026, July 2023. Interesting. Look at how low. Boom, boom. And then again. What happened in... Uh, July 2023 guys, Bitcoin went massively up after that. On weekly timeframes, the gap between the upper and lower band has rarely been narrower. What traditionally comes has always been good news for bulls. And during both of these previous times, Bitcoin's price rose significantly over the following 12 months. And I quote, a similar move this time around could target Bitcoin within a range of 140 to $190,000. And looking at history, history suggests a September Bitcoin breakout. Rex Capital suggests that September would be the make it or break it moment for Bitcoin's comeback. I think I've showed you guys in past videos, we are approaching the post having parabolic upside. It should be about 22 bars. We're about 13 bars in, 91 days. We have about another 60 days to wait potentially if history repeats itself that is which i'm inclined to believe that it somewhat will it might not repeat exactly but it will play out very similarly all right now i want to give you guys an update on riot stock i haven't talked about this one in a long time and you know while it is 3x or so 4x almost from its bear market lows i mean that's like what bitcoin has done so i thought it would outperform bitcoin and it really hasn't yet and by no means is it the worst performing miner this cycle but they are definitely faster horses like clean spark like iron lately like wolf even mara what am i seeing though recently for a riot we do have a gap here right around 10 maybe we go and fill it and you know we definitely can come down towards the support line that we have been trending on this whole bull run december 2022 we bottomed out here at 320 and we have maintained this level as a support there is a clear direction we also have a clear resistance as well and we are tightening up into the end of this year maybe we break out before the end of this pattern uh, but this pattern basically puts it into early 2025 maybe we break out sooner than that right now we are finding resistance on this trend line here and funny enough we were react we did like break it to the downside and then it found it as a resistance and now we're finding resistance on it again we're getting some good momentum recently price was just kind of going sideways while rsi was rising we we're getting a little bit of momentum coming in and the price did spike from that however we did print a gap so maybe we come down, fill this gap, 
bounce right off this previous resistance here, right around nine, ten dollars psychological ten. But I do think where Riot's concerned, we are going to fill out this pattern until we finally break it to the upside. I do expect a break to the upside. I do expect more than twenty dollars from Riot. I'd be very disappointed if Riot didn't make it to twenty and did less than double from here. One thing to notice is they have missed their revenue quite a few times, and uh, their revenue expectation is seventy-six million, which is a three million decrease over last quarter which was before the halving, so I find that kind of surprising that they only expect a $3 million decrease. So get ready for this revenue to miss again. It might not, but I mean, that's been the trend. I mean, they're, they are very prone to missing revenue. Look at this, like every time they miss revenue expectations. The last time they didn't miss a revenue expectation was the quarter uh, ending December 2022. They beat their revenue, but they their EPS was a 600% miss, but they did, hey, they uh, beat their revenue expectation there at least. But yeah, missed there. Missed there, missed there. But look at the EPS, though, hits every time. That's funny. And then, yeah, I mean, they're expecting an unprofitable quarter just like many, which is okay. And they are expecting a small decrease in revenue. We might miss that, though. And maybe we get a good opportunity back here under $10 one more time for Riot this cycle. So do I think Riot is worth a buy here? I mean, yes and no. I think there's some better miners you could choose. Some potentially faster moving miners this cycle. That's not to say, you know, you shouldn't put like 10, 20, 30% of your... Bitcoin miner portfolio into Riot. I do think it's a relatively safe one. I do think it will be higher in price. I do think it can easily double from here. And who knows, maybe it does much more than that and it's just kind of had a weak start. But face it, I mean, a 4X from the bottom isn't a weak start by any means, just comparatively to the other miners. What I expect from Riot is basically some chop for a while until we finally break out of this range. So to me, don't expect any huge moves from Riot until we break out of this descending resistance. I do expect we hold up this ascending support. So what's big though is this long-term pattern. The bigger the pattern, typically the bigger the breakout. And I do think it'll be a breakout to the upside. I do think it's worth keeping an eye on Riot for the breakout. But let me know what you guys think. I know Riot's kind of been a bit disappointing compared to others, but there definitely have been worse performers out there. Let me know what you guys are picking up today. Are you taking advantage of your Bitcoin mining positions and selling calls? Are you buying some puts to hedge here? And over the rest of this year, do you expect Bitcoin lower in price by the end of the year or higher in price by the end of the year i personally do expect it to be higher in price and these are the last moments to buy any dips six months from now i likely won't be preaching to buy the dip thanks as always guys hopefully you have a good weekend and i will see you after the weekend's over